Hello, everybody. Uh, I'd like to just give you a very warm welcome to our webinar today. Uh, in fact, welcome back to some of you who may have been on previous webinars with us. Uh, and I know you're joining us today from across the globe, so it could be good morning, good afternoon, <laughs> or good evening, but it's, it's great to have you all here with us. Um, just a very quick introduction to myself. Um, so I'm Jean Lawson. I'm the partner manager for uh, EMEA for Yellowfin. And I've actually been with Yellowfin uh, over eight years now, so I'm very familiar with this topic that we have today about smarter reporting with Yellowfin. Um, and we've built strong relationships over the years with uh, many BMC partners and, and many customers as well. So great to have you with us. Um, so before I go any further, just giving you a very quick introduction to our, my, my, my colleagues and our, our speakers for today. So firstly, we have Stephen Ball. So Stephen is our pre-sales director for IDERA, so our mother company of Yellowfin. Um, also very pleased to have with me Rob Jones, who's our solution architect for Yellowfin. Um, and then you see myself, of course, partner manager of Yellowfin. So our plan for today, just as I go through the agenda very quickly with you, is, is um, hopefully no surprise to you that we're actually going to talk to you about how you can convert your current smart reporting, which is now pending end of life, to Yellowfin. So we are assuming already that you're aware that Yellowfin um, is, is smart reporting. And our relationship with BMC actually goes back over eight years now. So uh, when they originally did uh, uh, over a 12 month POC to select a, a, an embedded BI solution to replace multiple tools used across Remedy and other product suites. And Yellowfin was selected as the best uh, reporting solution uh, at the time. Um, you might be wondering the little clocks underneath the, uh, the agenda you can see today, and that's the time we've allocated just to, to give you an idea. So it'll be a very quick uh, summary of background. Just uh, talking about smart reporting, maybe the impact of end of life, what that means to your business and how we can help you help you de-risk de -risk that cost of change. And our goal um, ultimately is to help BMC Helix customers to upgrade and, and we'll cover uh, that simple path in the third, um, the third block you see there about upgrading, how you can move forward in hours with zero downtime and keep your current content. So really de-risking it and having that business continuity uh, and Stephen and Rob will both be talking about that um, and then uh, the, the, uh, it's very exciting we're going to have Rob talking through even smarter reporting for you uh, and with Yellowford 9 we really do bring years of innovation and investment in the product and a lot of advanced functionality features innovation security um, and removing some of those limitations. So what we're excited to do today, as well as talk through the technical paths, which we've done before in previous webinars, we'll also be doing a little bit of showing, uh, showing Yellowfin in action as well. And, and you'll hear about all of these options um, ac across the course of the webinar, you know, the unlimited data sources and the advanced analytics and more. So uh, that's the goal of today. And we'll, we'll be covering that in, in, the, in the next um, 40 minutes or uh, hour or so. Um, um, interesting for you, just to, uh, while I wrap up and before I pass to Stephen, uh, just a very quick anecdote because uh, Stephen, Rob and I all attended the uh, service desk show in London a few weeks ago, uh, all the ITSM vendors, providers um, and of course BMC partners and BMC themselves were attending that event. So we took that opportunity to chat to them about the end of life and the impact on customers um, and it really was clear to us that the pain is real and, and we heard um, you know, there's a number of customers going through this challenge of, you know, not being able to to move to cloud containers, uh, a num number of issues, and and just the sheer task of having to migrate, sometimes hundreds or e hundreds or even thousands of reports and their dashboards to another solution, which is certainly not a like for like comparison with a, an advanced um, integrated analytics platform. Um, so we heard about the cost and the complexity. So. I just wanted to say you're not alone if you're if you're on this webinar and feeling that pain and wondering which path to take. So, you know, our goal today is absolutely to help you with that business continuity, as I said before. Um, so how we can help. Let's dive into the detail now. Um, I'm really pleased to, to pass over to, to Stephen shortly. Um, and just a quick note that throughout the webinar, there will be an opportunity to ask questions. Um, whoops, I, I don't know what I've done there. <laughs> I think I've pressed the wrong button. But there will be a chance to ask questions. If you can look on the right under Q&A, there's a little chat box. So 
please post your questions and I'll be keeping an eye on that. And at the relevant time, we'll try and jump in and ask, uh, answer your questions as, as we go through the webinar. Um, anyway, without further ado, I'm really delighted to hand over to my colleague, Stephen, um, for the next section. Thank you, Stephen. All right, cheers, Jean. Thank you. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's move on to have a look at uh, where we are now. Uh, I'm going to start off uh, a little bit of time, just quickly going over some of the background. Um, just make sure we're all kind of uh, aware of the kind of same uh, backstory uh, and what's been kind of happening, and um, we'll kind of cover through uh, the end of life elements as well. So as Jean mentioned, you know, smart reporting is powered by Yellowfin. It is Yellowfin. One of the great things about Yellowfin as a product is how easy it is to embed it into other systems. Uh, and this is something we see with a lot of customers that uh, even where they're using Yellowfin on one part of their business, um, because of how easy it is to actually integrate it into workflows of multiple systems very quickly and easily, they're beginning to you know, use it uh, in other areas as well to help bring the different data sets together and to be able to provide that consistent view across the organization. And uh, the version that is currently shipped with BMC with Smart Reporting is Yellowfin 8. I think it originally started off on Yellowfin 7. Um, so you know, the kind of the background really, as Jean mentioned, is quite a, a look at what was available. And by using Yellowfin, we got this kind of best in class BI platform and analytics platform that was made available. And that's what uh, Remedy uh, Smart Reporting uh, was based on. You know, it was an OEM version of Yellowfin. So one of the things that we offer to our OEM customers is the ability to bring huge capabilities out to their user base very quickly and easily. Um, but also where we're kind of uh, you know, selling Yellowfin into kind of big corporates, uh, you might want a whole load of features. Sometimes as an OEM, you might want limited features, for example, only limited to a single data source um, or to kind of specific uh, aspects of what you're after. Um, so smart reporting you know, has some limitations around it in terms of what it has been able to do um, because of the OEM uh, agreement distribution factor that's there. And one of the key things really that, to look at at the moment, uh, the version of Yellowfin or smart reporting that's there is a few years old. You know, it hasn't been updated and it hasn't got the benefits of some of the, the newer, smarter features, um, some of the you know, additional speed up things that have been brought in in the last you know, two years, you know, two plus years now. And um, certainly what uh, an upgrade to Yellowfin from the existing OEM release of Yellowfin that you have uh, for smart reporting brings is the ability to have the option to open up to additional data sources, the ability to um, be removing you know, uh, restrictions and getting these additional features that are there that you can take advantage of today. And I think the key point that's been made at the start is this is an upgrade of your existing smart reporting um, to the latest version of Yellowfin. So you're not losing or having kind of breaking changes here. And um, this is about enhancing the existing capability with additional um, features that have been uh, brought around. And you know, certainly you know, one of my favorite ones um, from conversations we've had at the, the show and with other people um, is uh, around things like the presentations. Um, certainly from a few conversations, um, there's a couple of bits that kind of tuck into that. So keep an eye out for those later through. So now we understand smart reporting, Yellowfin, it's the same engine that's there. I really wanted to kind of touch into what the end of life uh, is meaning, where that's at and, and kind of what's going on in that area. So originally the end of life was scheduled up for April 22. Um, I think uh, obviously BMC realized it was a bit optimistic and a lot of customer requirements needing to kind of push things through and they kind of extended it through to the end of uh, last year. Um, but still, you know, it's it's a big path to be able to move. And there was a lot of challenges and pain that people were highlighting with trying to move to, you know, to Helix dashboards. You know, uh, it's not a direct replacement. 
um, by any means. You know, it allows you to do some basic dashboarding and, and reporting, which is which is fine. But it really isn't you know, a BI platform that's you know, running a whole load of capabilities that uh, Yellowfin does under the hood. And the conversion process as well has been exceptionally painful for people. You know, it's basically pulling out the the SQL and that's it. Um, now, that's okay to a point, but you then basically have to rebuild all your reports and your dashboards and to make them visualized again. Uh, and this requires a specific skill set and it's a time consuming job as well. And so, you know, this is a, a, a big expense in terms of migrating to, to Helix that uh, people are going, we just haven't got the time, we haven't got the risk factor to be able to take that on. Um, and we really want to just be able to keep our smart reporting going or keep you know, the visualization layer working and to kind of keep doing what we're doing. Um, also on the, the Helix thing, I think a lot of people have been struggling with the, the report filters and the export capabilities, which are, you know, even exporting data out is, is quite hard work, um, getting the layouts and the, you know, the, the formattings and, and other kind of things worked out. Um, some of the security and the governance features as well are quite limited. Uh, and they act in a very different way with folders and stuff. So in terms of control, it's a it's a big change um, that people are having to kind of fight with. Um, and on top of that, you know, it's not as simple to create reports and dashboards as it has been within smart reporting. Um, you know, the, the the metadata content and structures are just not as user friendly um, um so it's it's really limiting down um who can get stuff going um so this is a whole training issue to get people up and going it is uh, um you know it, it's a big time delay in places where you need to be reacting to what's going on in a timely manner and um, and all of a sudden you're kind of working with one hand behind your back now with that said, you know, there's some great things that the Helix dashboards bring, and there's no reason why you can't actually work with both of them side by side. Um, where there's a, a reason to use a Helix dashboard, you know, go and use it. That's absolutely fine. But you can still integrate in and use uh, Yellowfin alongside uh, with your ITSM. And where you can bring all the reports that you have today, your dashboards forward today, um, where you can still work in the, the, the same way uh, it makes a lot of sense um, to be able to pick that up and go. And especially if you look through the ecosystem, you know, the, the BMC customers and partners, they're familiar with using Yellowfin. Um, you know, they've been using it for a number of years. There's thousands of trained professionals out there using it. Um, you know, the ability to start linking into multiple different data sources as well uh, is something that um, certainly in the past we've seen quite a lot of take up of. In, and one really just simple example of that was... Uh, you know, we're chatting with a HR company who have got their HR systems and they've got their ITSM uh, system working alongside and they needed to be able to link uh, regularly back to you know, parent accounts in the HR system. Um, and by using uh, the connection to different data sources, they're then able to you know, use you know, smart buttons and link directly to those you know, from, uh, from one side to the other and, and kind of combine that in which made life a lot easier and saved you know, just minutes in workflows that are constantly being done, which adds up to improving the productivity and the service ability of, uh, of what you're doing as a team, um, which has a great impact on the whole business at a wide, a wider viewpoint. Um, and I say, we're two years on, um, so there's a lot of additional things and I know Rob's gonna be spending quite a bit of time just to kind of you know, take you through some of those today. So we mentioned the upgrade journey. Um, what does that involve? How do we get there? Um, it is really low risk. And the the path is one that is well trodden because it's one that we've done for years and we have to do regularly with our, our Yellowfin customers. Um, basically, uh, the, the process that we work through with you, we can provide you documentation or you can work with a partner to work through it. First and foremost is just to check what you want to upgrade. Um, when you do this, it's a good chance to evaluate the reports that you've got in place uh, and say, well, which ones do we want to keep? Is there anything we want to get rid of? And um, we've got some uh, scripts to run to kind of give you a, a top list of you know, your most used reports so you can then focus in your testing or your, uh, your migration work. Um, 
but primarily the reason for that is just to do the testing at the end. Um, because what we do is we actually take a, a duplicate copy of your existing Yellowfin instance. So although it's branded smart reporting it is a Yellowfin instance that's deployed, it's just white labeled. So we're able to take that, well then leave you running with the existing copy of it. And we then able to take the, the, the duplicate copy, run it through the upgrade, apply the updates onto it. Um, and then you've then got your test list to say, right, which are our most used reports. Let's just go and check those, make sure we're happy with everything following the upgrade. 99% um, of the time, everything's absolutely fine. If there's uh, any kind of small tweaks that we need to apply, then uh, they can be sorted through that. Um, and then you're then ready to put that live. Um, so it really is a very simple process and it leaves you up and running. Um, it really de-risks the business uh, in terms of what you're doing. Uh, you end up with the, you know, the latest version of Yellowfin running in place of smart reports, um, you know, especially on the, the, the current you know, on-prem deployments. Uh, it literally is just a case of repointing it. It's, it uses exactly the same uh, APIs to link in. So to, uh, to BMC, it's completely seamless. Um, so that is a, a really straightforward path um, to, to kind of get you moving forward and getting up. And uh, so, yeah, I'm going to pass over to Rob now um, and I'm going to let him kind of take you through you know, how you can be smarter and faster with smarter <laughs> version of Yellowfin and, uh, and the additional updates and some of the top things that are kind of in uh, and around and the reasons why people are, are, are picking up Yellowfin 9 uh, as their, their version of reporting moving forward. Okay, hello everyone. So, um, <clears throat> as Stephen says, uh, I'd like to walk you through a demonstration of some of the uh, the features in Yellowfin 9. Um, just pick up on uh, last thing Stephen was saying about that upgrade journey and saying, yes, I've, I've done it myself. It is a very straightforward process. There are one or two options. So, one of the first things that you'd be asked is what you actually want to achieve through that process at the end. It will depend whether you're trying to do an exact like-for-like -like replacement or whether you want to open up new functionality. And there can be slight variations on the process to achieve those in terms of enabling some of that functionality that was turned off uh, previously. Or if you want to keep it turned off, you can keep it turned off. Um, things like multiple data sources and, and the different types of data source you want to connect to. Um, but uh, so smart reporting was built on Yellowfin, um, but as Stephen was saying, it, it now lags behind um, the current version of Yellowfin in terms of both speed and functionality. And uh, I'm going to try and show you uh, some of the new features that uh, are unlocked with a, a full Yellowfin license. So for a starters, you get to keep all of the out of the box smart reporting for reports and dashboards that uh, that came from BMC, as well as any additional content that you may have built. It's a, it's a straightforward lift and shift. Everything carries forward, uh, but you get much more than that, as uh, as we shall see in a minute. And you see on the slide some of those features. I'm going to um, give you a flavour of how some of those things look and, and feel just now. It, this will all be from the end user um, perspective. I'm not going to show you how to actually uh, set up things like um, signals and um, guided analytics and so on. Um, but I'll show you what it feels like from a user perspective. And uh, there are more detailed uh, sessions available on how to do the configuration if you want to pick those up at a later date. Um, I say smart reporting was restricted to uh, reporting on data from BMC applications. Essentially, you had to get your data into the AR system database in order to be able to report on it. And having done that, you then had to figure out what security you wanted to apply to it. And you know, that was uh, anecdotally uh, too much effort for a lot of people. Um, but if you did, then don't worry, you'll still be able to report on the data you've already imported uh, and any that you continue to import that way. But if you didn't, uh, then good news. Um, if you've got data elsewhere that you want to include in your ITM ITSM dashboards, then you will be able to uh, report on those very easily using a, a full version of Yellowfin. Uh, we can connect to any data source which supports JDBC and a whole host of others uh, using custom adapters, such as uh, you know, those that are provided by our, our friends at CData, um, all the native uh, ad uh, native drivers for um, uh, providers like Salesforce and uh, and other uh, CRM applications on. Um, I'm going to move over and, one sec, 
yeah. So once you once you've got your data, um, whether that's uh, in BMC or whether it's in those other systems, you'll have access to some great new visualizations, uh, such as the spark lines that you can see on uh, this slide. Uh, you know, they're a great way of presenting a whole raft of trend information in a compact format, which is easy to interpret. You can see everything at a glance and pick out the things that you then want to drill into uh, and look at in more detail. Um, you can also include uh, action buttons and, and hyperlinks or URLs uh, in your report. And um, the hyperlink will take you to a different, a different URL for each cell that's visible here. So depending on the content of a particular line of a report, the URL will um, take you to uh, content that uh, reflects that. Um, it's very easy to configure and set up. So you know, if you want to go out and uh, view the HR details for an employee that's shown in one of your reports, uh, or click on the firewall rules for a virtual machine that's listed in the um, CMDB, either of those things are very easy to set up. Uh, as long as that you've got that information in a, a web application, um, which can be parameterized. Um, some other features that we've added, um, we've got a new image manager, which helps you to um, control the use of images across all your reports and dashboards. And you can also um, configure folders so that approval is required to publish content to them. So you know, one of the challenges can be uh, when you know, open up BI content, if you have too many people creating their own reports, you can create things and quickly get out of hand um, and you don't really know what content can be trusted. Uh, you can manage that using um, this, this feature to uh, require authorization before content can be put into specific folders. And that could be like your official reports. Um, well, that's all, all great features for your report designers, but we've also made it easy for business users to ask and answer their own questions with a new feature called Guided NLQ, or Guided Natural Language Query. So if you, if you want to enable your users to self-serve ad hoc reports and reduce the reporting workload on your development team, then Yellowfin has got the answer for you. Um, guided Natural Language Query, anyone can ask questions of their data. Uh, now, our approach to natural language query is a bit different to anything else you might see on the market because it is guided, the clues in the name, um, but it, it takes a user through a step-by-step -step process to create some pretty advanced questions while making it uh, effortless for them. They don't, they don't need to know SQL in advance, it just guides them through the process. And, uh, and I'd like to show you a bit of that now, so I'm just going to share my screen, hopefully. to come up okay so we're looking at a we're looking at a dashboard here which has uh, been put together by one of my colleagues it's, it's got an itsm theme but this is the kind of thing that you might build if you'd actually extracted your data from bmc and put it into a data warehouse uh, rather than reporting on bmc directly at this point but you can build similar visualizations against the bmc data uh, should you wish to do so um we'll perhaps take a moment to look at that uh, dashboard a little and just look at some of the features so you may recognize the spark lines that were extracted um, into the slide a moment ago we've embedded reports and dashboard overall it's got a nice nice look and feel been put together using some reasonably sharp graphics um, look at, it's got sub tabs so we click on there you can see some more reports here we've got pie charts and uh, stack bar graph We've got a heat map going on here, um, some trend analysis. And then finally, in our third tab, we've got um, some more information, including something we'll come back to a little bit later, showing the signals functionality, which I'll talk to you about in a moment. But the first thing I want to do is show you that guided NLQ feature. So we want to ask a question. This yellow button in the default yellow fin styling, although you can change it to something else if you wish. Um, Click on that, and we have an option to ask a question. When we do that, first thing we need to do is say, uh, which view do I want to look at? So yellowfin view, um, you may have one, you may have several. In a, in a default smart reporting environment, that there could be sort of five or six if you've got all of the different BMC products uh, available. Um, so there'll be one for incident management, one for change management, and so on. And it just it's, it's the data model for that particular type of uh, data that you want to look at. So here we're going to choose ITSM ticket support. Um, and this is, a, this is the view which underpins the dashboard that we were looking at a moment ago. So we're allowing the users to ask ad hoc questions about that data. So we click Start. And now what this is doing is, as I said, it's going to walk us through a step-by-step -step process to create the query. 
So we've got these, um, I was going to say verbs, they're not all verbs, are they? But it's how you start the question. You can start off with show. And if it, this is if you want to show the metric or the thing you're measuring. So in this case, it's um, the only one in the view is the count of the tickets. You can list things which are in the dimensions. So we can have a look at that. That's, that's, that's an easy one to start with. So we'll say list. And what can we list? We could list the ticket categories, business units. We can see who the agents actually are on your on your um, uh, call center. Um, when we've got a complete question, the button over here, the ask question button goes blue and it's ready to go. So that's actually a complete question. We can go ahead and ask it. And that pops a list of the uh, call center agents. I've got an exotic cast of uh, um, characters from the past and some present. <laughs> Um, when we're done with that, if we like the question, uh, we can say we're all done. Uh, we could view it as a, well, in this case, it'll look the same, but we can view it as a report. We can ask a new question or we can edit the existing question. We're pretty much done with that one, so we'll ask a new question. And let's have a look at uh, maybe a top three report. So we'll say top, we type the number we want, and then what do we want to see? So we've got a choice when we're doing um, top end reports. So is it by percentage of the total or is it by value? But we'll say by value for now. So we'd like to look at the top three by value. We'll see the business units who are actually raising all these tickets. So what are they asking? Total tickets. So you see, it's a nice straightforward question. Top three by value, business units, ranked by total tickets. Um, and we clear that. We can see that's ready to go. Um, look carefully there. When we do that, the elephant has completed that question for us. Um, it was ready to go because when we set up the view, we defined that if the user didn't say any different, the default time period was going to be this quarter eight. Could have chosen a different time period for the default, but that's, that's what I picked when I set it up. Um, I could also specify a, a, a period when I asked the question. You can see that in a minute. Um, but Yellowfin has gone away. It's uh, run the query. Uh, it's looked at the results, and it's decided that um, a, a bar chart is going to be the easiest or the best way to display those results. Um, so that's what we're looking at here. We have some options. We can view the data as a in a tabular format. We can toggle between those. Um, and we can also go ahead and say, well, that's a really interesting uh, insight there that uh, I now know the source of my tickets. I'd like to share that information. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and look at some of these add to options. There are three of them. Uh, if, if, I'm a, if I have the authority to do it, I could add uh, this report to a dashboard, an existing dashboard, potentially a new one. Um, I can also add it to a story or a presentation. Now that's those new data storytelling uh, features that uh, we mentioned. Um, certainly new since version 7. I think some of them may have started in version 8, but significantly enhanced in version 9. Um, we'll go, have a, go ahead and have a look at the story. So I'm saying here, I want to embed this uh, this um, visualization into a story. The first thing I'm going to have to do is actually save that report that's been created for me um, somewhere sensible. So we'll stick with the default titles, we'll put it in examples, ITSM. So this is just saying where in my Yellowfin instance do I want to store the report that's been created. I'll go ahead and save that. Now we go straight into, I'm embedding that report into a story. So it's given me a default caption based on the title of the report. Um, I'll just give the report a quick title. Um, oh, sorry, the story a quick title. Create a new story. So a story in Yellowfin is like a, a data-centric blog. Um, so I can make it look pretty, start by adding a, a nice bit of graphics. Again, I mentioned the image manager. The palette of images that's available can be controlled, um, and you can add some uh, suitable images for different kinds of story related to ticket management uh, if you want to. Um, here is the visualization itself, and that's a that's a live visualization. I can that's not too much interaction uh, available with this because it's a very simple data set. But if it were a drillable report that I'd embedded in the story, I'd be able to drill into it here in situ. Um, I can add text. So um, what a surprise. Um, there for now, just give an idea, but I could type whatever I wanted. I could embed uh, additional content. Um, 
I can embed images from elsewhere. I can even, should I wish to, in, embed uh, content from some other um, visualization tools, um, just showing the flexibility of Yellowfin. Because what we're doing here is we're creating a, um, a data storytelling and data collaboration environment. Um, this content stays, although we can, we can embed content from elsewhere, this content stays within Yellowfin by default. So the beauty of it is you can share it and it's all secure. It's still protected by Yellowfin security. If I go ahead and publish that now, um, it'll be available. Uh, again, I have to tell it where I want to put the story. Examples, ITSM. I'm going to have to give it a description, um, but I'm going to be lazy and just copy the, just copy the title for now. And it asks me, well, you're, you're publishing a story. Who do you want to share it with? Um, so I put in, I can say, um, I'll share it with... Um, Joe blogs and go ahead and submit that. So when I do that, Joe blogs, it will, uh, will then get notification that uh, there's a story for him to see um, and he can look at it next time he logs in. Rob, it's Jean here. Yeah. Hi. Um, I just wanted to alert, there's a couple of um, questions that have come through um, through the, the question answer section. And I think it might be a relevant point to raise a, a couple of them now. Um, and Simon, I'll answer your other question at the end. Um, one question from uh, Simon is, does the guided question apply to BMC data? So the guided query you were showing five, a few minutes ago. So <laughs> interesting question. Um, in principle, it can do. Um, the BMC data itself, um, we have noticed one or two slight issues with the uh, querying of BMC data out of the box, but it's certainly possible to create uh, views onto the BMC data and then write queries against those. So as things stand at the moment, you would need to uh, replicate the view and, and uh, implement a direct uh, query against the database. Um, but uh, we'll be investigating what's, uh, what's causing those issues um, very shortly. Um, yeah. But the expectation is that you will be able to do that, yes. Um, yeah, thank you. And the other question from Neil about um, are smart reporting users only able to access one report at a time? No, in, sorry, in smart reporting, users are only able to access one report at a time. So with Yellowfin 9, will users be able to view more than one report at the same time? Um so I think the answer to that is, I, I said at the beginning that it would depend what you wanted to achieve. So that is absolutely achievable. Yes, you can, yes. You can set it up, okay. set up Yellowfin so that you can um, view, open multiple tabs at the same time, if that's what you mean, and have it in different places. You can create their own dashboards, which include content from multiple reports at the same time. It's another way of achieving it. So you will have the ability to create your own dashboards. So you're not limited to what, um, what BMC provided with smart reporting. Um, okay. Hopefully yeah. that gives a flavour of it, but no, the answer to almost everything you might want to do in terms of sharing content with your users is is yes. I mean, it's, it's very flexible in terms of yeah, how you present that information. And I think maybe, Neil, um, that's a one-on-one -on -one conversation we can help you with. We can show you the options, but um, okay. Great. Thank you, Rob. Sorry, interrupting. <laughs> and back to you. Just say come came through. Thank you. So I'll quickly switch back to the slides um yeah so i think i mentioned the yellowfin stories are like data centric blogs and you can use those to share insights securely um within your organization and that's in contrast to you know other tools where you might have to you might be able to copy and paste the content um into uh, an email or another document or paste it into a presentation or something of that sort um, but the problem with that is that content then is is uh, typically uncontrolled and if they email it outside the organization that information has just gone outside whereas if you keep it in the yellowfin story you can still share it with any user of yellowfin um but they can't they can't copy it send it outside it's still it's all visible within um only visible within your organization um and also it's it's live content so you can interact with it it, it remains drillable and so on um so that was talking about yellowfin stories the uh, the other option that we uh, i didn't show you but um is similar in some respects is the presentation option and that that really allows you to create what looks like a um effectively like a powerpoint deck but it's a, a deck which includes um reports and um charts and so on 
along with your own commentary. And again, those remain uh, remain dynamic and it it's, can be used effectively to create templates for things like um, regular meetings where you go in and walk through slides in a particular sequence, just organize the reports you want to look at. Um, you can add commentary on it for a particular month uh, or week if you want to, um, but you can refer, it's always up to date and um, uh, you, can, you can use it in the meeting to, look, to drill down if that's, uh, if that's appropriate. Um, So Yellowfin 9 has, uh, has another self-service feature um, that's really quite powerful called Assisted Insights, which can help business users to understand what's driving the numbers they're seeing. Um, so let's have a, a look at a simple example of that. I'll go back to sharing my screen. So we finish with that story. I'll just get rid of that. So for this one, we'll uh, look at another um, sample uh, dashboard that uh, has been put together by uh, my colleagues again. Um, so when we're looking at one of these numbers, we look at it and say, oh, that one looks interesting. Um, I wonder what drives that. Uh, so what, what actually contributes to those numbers? If I hover over um, one of the segments on a chart, I've got an option down there highlighted in blue called Auto Analyze. And this is a new feature in version nine. And the two options within that, there's an explain option and a compare option. And they're quite similar, but explain works on a single segment. And the idea is that it will, a yellowfin will attempt to um, tell you what's driving that number. Um, so it goes away and uh, using the information contained in the metadata, the view definition, it says, right, what are, what are the other dimensions in this model? What metric are you looking at? Uh, in this case, it was the uh, invoiced amount. Um, um, calls it revenue of evidence, invoiced amount is the, is the underlying measure. And it, it goes away, creates you a chart, and it's breaking, um, breaking down that number by these other dimensions. So it's effectively drilling down or drill across, in, you might like to think of it. And it's then uh, providing a system generated narrative that sort of tells you a bit more about what Yellowfin um, thinks is driving those numbers. So it's the kind of thing that if you asked a data analyst to tell you, well, you know, tell me about this number, they would go away and generate it. But here, Yellowfin is doing it all for you. So it's something that a business user can do for themselves. Uh, and in that sense, it's real uh, self-service. Um, let's have a quick look at the other feature, which was, um, again, if I hover over a segment, also analyze, I can choose compare. Now this time, obviously I need to say, what do I want to compare that with? Just choose another segment in that chart, pick one at random, compare. And in this case, again, it's going away and Yellowfin is looking at the model and it's going to try to explain what's driving the difference between those two segments. So what, what other things vary that might be affecting um, the total figure that we're looking at in the chart. So how much work it's doing, of course, depends on how complex the model is and also how many of those um, dimensions you've chosen to include in the scope of assisted insights. So I, I said we weren't going to uh, get into the detail of how you configure it, but there is a choice at the point that you um, configure assisted insights to say, well, although I have all these dimensions in my view, um, it's going to be too complex for my users if I include them. So I can um, make it as simple as possible and only put in those uh, metrics and dimensions that uh, are likely to be well understood by this users. Um, so in this case, it's gone away and said, right, those are the two values. It tells me a bit more about them. What is the total? Essentially total. Um, and then it gets straight into the meat of trying to explain um, how those numbers vary and what's driving those differences. So it's looked at them based on the, um, in this case, it's looked at the demographic underneath. Uh, it's looked then at uh, what's driving them based on the sum of the invoiced amount and it's doing a comparison on different segments of, uh, it's more for me on my screen, but um, making comparisons at that level. And it does those across two and then even three um, dimensions. Um, there's a whole raft of information there, which once again, you would typically have to ask a data analyst to go away and do some research, create all these uh, graphs by hand uh, in order to explain it to you, but the system's done it for you. that one. Mm -hmm. 
So while we're uh, while we're talking about AI-driven insight, we, we shouldn't mention our, our shiny new signals capability. Um, now, configuring signals is definitely a job for a data analyst to know both your data and your business, as it can get a bit technical. But once it's up and running, it's like having a team of data analysts sifting through your data for deviations from established patterns and then presenting them to you along with a raft of contextual insight. Um, so signals can be configured to look for outliers in your data, changes in the trends. So if you get a step from um, one change, one trend um, to a markedly different uh, level of performance, up or down, um, new or missing data values and more. And then you can present those results in the dashboard. So if we go back to um, ITSM tickets dashboard that we started with. And over on this SLA tab, we can see that we've embedded some signals within the dashboard. So in fact, this will get updated. If I were to rerun the signals job, then I might see some more signals on here. Um, I'm just going to click on one of those and show you what a signal in, in involves. Um, so when you open up a signal, you can see that there's a there's the description of the signal itself, and there's some color coding going on here. So by default, um, a, a bad thing, well, this hasn't been set up quite right, to be honest, because it's um, it says step down is in blue. Normally, blue is a good thing, is a, is a bad thing, and uh, orange is a good thing. Um, that can be configured. Here, um, it's step down. Whether you think of that good or bad uh, is up to you, but uh, I guess tickets, it's probably probably bad. Um, I can see uh, a timeline across the bottom, which I can vary as, uh, so again, one of the selection mechanisms. Look at a longer time frame. And if I do expand it, uh, expand the time frame, then I start to see other signals showing on, on the timeline as well. And I can just click to navigate to one of those if I want to. Uh, but sticking with the one that we're looking at at the moment, we've got some other functionality. We've got some more detailed description. Um, over on the right-hand side here, I can see some related metrics, so average time open for those tickets, I can see the sum of the total tickets, how they vary over that time period as well. Um, I can also look at other metrics and see how closely correlated they are with uh, the tickets per day. Um, and you can see the actual um, correlation coefficient, if that's, uh, if that's of interest to you. Um, we'll look then at the this section at the bottom of the screen, we've got um, discussion so there's the ability to create a discussion with your with colleagues around well what does this signal actually mean is it significant what's driving it um we'll touch on that in a moment uh, relevance puts in a context comparing it with the total picture um depending on what it is there may be some analysis so in this case yellowfin has uh, done a further level of drill down into that information and presented it back as a collection of charts and narrative um and you can embed it in stories and in this case, it's not in a story yet, but if you want to add it to a story, just as we did with the um, guided NLQ query result, we can add it by clicking the button. Um, and, and the workflow piece up at the top, if I look at a signal, um, I said it was like having a team of data analysts. Well, the first step is seeing the signal. The next step is explaining the signal. Um, Yellowfin will have a go at it, but if you want your data analysts to look at it more, they can take ownership of a signal um, and then go away. That means they're saying to their colleagues, I'll look at this one. Um, I can say, right, I'll look at this one for you. Um, then I will own it until such time as I either close it or do something with it. I could unassign it if I give up. I could reassign it to somebody else if I think there's someone who can uh, do it more justice. Or I can dismiss it, which just hides it for me. Or I can close it, which will hide it for everybody. So there's all those things to do with um, signals workflow. Um, and we've seen it already presented in, in a dashboard, so I'll just finish that one. Actually, I'll, I'll leave it on this one. So finally, it's saying um, one of the things that you um, also unlock as a result of having um, just close that as a result of having a full Yellowfin license is that um, it's embeddable. So we said that um, smart reporting, obviously BMC took. Yellowfin and embedded it to some extent within their system. They certainly made it um, did what we call white labeling to brand it to make it look like a BMC product. Um, you would have the option to do something similar, but with your own branding. 
You can make Yellowfin look like uh, one of your own systems, apply your own branding to it. You can also choose to integrate it into your uh, applications if you wish. Um, it's got, it's got a, a comprehensive set of APIs. Um, we've got both SOAP and REST APIs available, and even a, even a Java set uh, API to allow you to um, take Yellowfin content and include it within your own uh, websites or applications. Um, and uh, so this is an example of uh, that we've got of. Um, Actually, I was going to say this example of what we're doing. Actually, this is just the dashboard showing some of that, uh, showing some of that content. It's another example of branding and applying um, uh, a company's own images to their to their dashboards and so on. Um, but you can actually go a step further. If I do close, um, can't see it now. I was going to say if I stop sharing, I'm not sure what you can see. I'm going to assume you can see the slides. So can you see a, all see a slide saying analytics anywhere? Um, so uh, I'm not sure. I'm yeah. seeing uh, seeing your face, but I'm not I quite sure what the slides are. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. How do we get the slides back on the screen? I move them. Does that bring it back? Hmm. Well, <laughs> I was going to hand over to Stephen, but you might want your slides back. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. I think we we can we can move on. I think um, yes. Yeah, there, there was one uh, question that came here whilst we're trying to work out um, how to get the slides to show. Um, I assume we can mash up data from multiple sources into a single report. Um, so you you can bring different data sources together and you can combine those onto uh, dashboards quite happily. Um, uh, you know that is certainly something you can do. Yes, you can do that on many levels, either in either within a, a report. If you actually want to join the data together, you can have a report which has multiple queries, and each of those queries can be against a different data source. Or you can have a dashboard that includes content from multiple reports. Um, Either of those is possible, or of course you can have a data warehouse and put the data from those sources into it and report on that. Uh, that's another option. But... Okay, I've got a message saying that we get the uh, slides are up and working, so that's good. All right then, um, let's uh, let's move on then. So yeah, thank you, Rob, for taking us through. I think there's some really kind of cool features in. I'll see the latest versions of Yellowfin that you can get hold of. I don't know that one. So I'm just going to put mute on my Alexa. It's just kind of start going off local. Um, so um, oh, I don't know. My camera's disappeared as well. Uh, okay. Anyway, um, I say there's some really great features there, uh, but I think I just want to kind of sum up really what we've been discussing and having a look at as we go through. Um, there is no disruption here. Uh, I think the main uh, the main thing that we've been hearing is that we just want smart reporting, or we want the access to the Yellowfin features that we've been using for a long time to be there and available to us. And certainly, you know, by getting Yellowfin, you know, we can upgrade your existing smart reporting content uh, and get that across. Uh, you can start taking benefit of having access to multiple different data sources. Um, we can start. Uh, embedding the data into other systems if you want to, or linking to other systems directly from uh, uh, from the, the existing content, um, and, and this makes it a, a lot quicker and simpler with with workflows. Obviously, you know, Ron, uh, Rob's mentioned about the guided NLQ, and this is a phenomenally you know, powerful feature to be able to, to access into um, and uh, and get going. Um, but I think you know one of the nice things, especially if you kind of uh, look at where you are today, there's a few little pieces that all can add, you know, one or two percent to your workflow time um, in terms of speeding them up. And, you know, all those little percentages kind of really add up to being a big difference in terms of what you provide on a service desk level. Um, you know, I think the the action buttons are a great way to you know link to other systems and get you know improve the workflows that you've got going. I think the um, spark lines are a fantastic addition to be able to show on the 
and the reports just kind of getting that higher level detail without having to drill in and out all the time uh, it makes decision making a lot simpler and easier um you know having the broadcast saved out to disk uh, now um so you can review those over time all these little things add up to just improving speed performance and uh, and what you're doing with the system I think the improved governance around being able to make sure that the reports are um, checked and verified before you push them out. Uh, you know, this is a nice feature that really just helps uh, limit down the amount of treacle to wade through that can sometimes happen when you give end users access to do what they want to do. Um, and I think, you know, I mentioned earlier on kind of the, the stories and the presentation side of things. I think that joined up conversation that you can have as a business. And um, specifically, you know, I think the, the regular ongoing presentation of data, you know, certainly from talking to a couple of people, you know, they've been saying, you know, what well, we need to be able to uh, export our data because we need to be able to import it into here to be able to do this with it, to get it ready for a board presentation, which we then need to do every month. Well, just take all the hard work out of the way. Just use, you know, build a template within Yellowfin and get your presentations built up, share them across, have live interactive data that the board people can get directly into, you know, whichever persona you're kind of driving your information across to within the organization, if it's day-to-day -day decision makers, if it's a board level, you know, presentations and that story around the data, bringing that together is a massive way to improve the value that you're getting from your data. And, you know, as I said, you know, there's some nice stuff around Helix and Helix tax boards. Use that. You can use that absolutely fine. It's not a one or the other. Um, you can do both. Uh, and make sure you're using the right tool for the right job, and you end up with a big win-win. Okay, so um, in terms of where we are, um, next steps. I think I'm going to hand over to Jean just to take you through the kind of the next steps. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Um, and I think just jumping on um, Simon to your question about how you manage how you manage user access just before I wrap up, um, because we're aware that um, it's kind of very familiar to us. You'll have content creators, you'll have readers or viewers, and how do you how do you manage that? Uh, that's another area. Absolutely, Elephant um, is very configurable for the user permissions, rights, access, uh, and again, we can maybe have a one-on-one -on -one session you know, how you can configure users and how easy that is. Um, as far as the commercial models um, go related to that question, potentially, uh, maybe we can walk through them uh, in more of a one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one discussion, but we've kept the pricing models uh, for everyone's benefit really, really simple. Uh, we've got core-based options for small, medium, large deployments. So, you know, where you fit in that, we can have a discussion. Um, and we've kept it, again, simple that um, you can either have just just for your environment, you might might want just the one or two data sources you have now, or you want the wider unlock the other data sources. So that's certainly a discussion we can walk through through the very, very simple options that we have. Um, but I, I think just wrapping up um, for further, and I'll open up again to any final questions. Um, what we'd really recommend you do is, you know, as a first step, next step, having seen what we've shared today, you will get a copy of this recording, uh, a copy of the slides, and, and you can review review the information. Uh, but we'd encourage you to talk to your BMC partner if you're working, if you're a customer on here and you're already working with a partner, please, you know, connect back with them and they can help you with uh, maybe the pricing discussion. If not, you know, do come to us. Um, they can also help you with, we have technical documentation. We've shared a summary today, but we do have a technical documentation that you can use and, and other assets. Um, but a step one, I think that QR code will take you straight to our landing page. Um, and I think as a, as a step one, in, in, in any case, we do encourage you to go onto our landing page um, if you can't capture that QR code, just type in Yellowfin and uh, Yellowfin solution for BMC Helix. It should uh, flag up. Uh, flag up. Um, and as, as a result, if you can fill that in, we can certainly send you um, also a 30 day a 30 day trial license if you want to test Yellowfin, want to have a play with some of the functionality that Rob's actually shared with you today. Um, and of course, we'd love to proactively reach out to you because we're keen to get your feedback um, from the session today. Um, and I think just going on to the second step as well, just uh, other than the landing page, um, 
pathways that your partners or we can offer, you know, absolutely a one-on-one -on -one conversation, consultation of where you are, where you want to go, um, what that pathway can look like. We can share in more detail so you can cost it for your internal uh, use cases um, and we can share those technical assets as well. So that's that would be another path. We just want to make sure we give you a clear path to success so you can review, uh, you, you review your options uh, fully. Um, and I think, again, on that next uh, third step, so uh, part of my role and, and the role of the team on the call today is to really establish with you how together with your BMC partner or directly with you, we can, uh, you know, we can work with you, um, you know, to support the technical conversations and all of the next steps involved. Um, and we do have um, Yellowfin expert partners across the regions, you know, German speaking, uh, you know, any, you know, in any of your localizations that could actually support as well. So they're Yellowfin expert delivery partners as well, and they can offer services training or anything you might need for implementation services to support that migration. So there is a whole team of expertise behind that to give you confidence that this can be a huge success for you. Um, so again, there's a lot of information I've shared as I know the next thing is go, how can we help you with that next step? Um, and just in wrapping up, just um, I'll, close, I'll close up just with any questions at all. Um, I mean, Simon, we can get back to you on your question just for a, to, to clarify that a little bit more around the users and the creators. Um, did anyone else have a question you wanted to add into the chat box or I've not seen anything else come through. We're almost on the hour. No. Any final thoughts, Stephen, from you or that we've missed? No. No, I think that there's been quite a few questions, quite a lot of comments coming up saying thank you for the content and, um, you know, people looking forward to connecting up, so, um, which is great. Uh, so, yeah, the, the best thing here really is um, just to connect up, you know, let's let's get that one-on-one -on -one time and we can talk in depth about your specific requirements. Um, yes. You know, the, the cost of the phone call with us, or, you know, we'll call you, it's no problem. Um, uh, just, you know, <laughs> let's, uh, yeah, let's just get connected. Um, you know, the, the one thing that you know, it's everybody's requirement is different in terms of what they're doing yeah. and where they're going. Uh, and the best thing you can do is just have you know, some time with somebody like Robert or, um, uh, or another member of the team, because yeah. we can, you know, once, uh, once we kind of get that one-to-one, -one, we can then specifically point you in the right direction of what you need. Um, and, yeah. and also share with you kind of some of the other ideas that may come relevant from kind of the conversations with you. You know, we've got experience of working and getting BI working in, hundreds and thousands of organizations around the world uh, and being able to tap into that source of knowledge in terms of what you're doing and where you're going. Um, and, and the other thing I definitely say is that, you know, one of the things I think that's been a real eye opener for people is that where they can say, ah, oh, I can actually tap into this alongside other stuff that we're doing and expand it beyond the realms of what we're doing in the ITSM area. Um, you know, a number of people absolutely love, you know, the, the Yellowfin capabilities and what they've been doing. Um, and this really is a great opportunity to be able to you know, expand that out further and, and gain that value back through the organisation. So, um, you know, it really is a, a, a great option. Win-win. Fantastic. Mm. Well, thanks, everybody, for your time today. I know some of you from probably very, quite late in the evening for you or you're just having your first cup of coffee. So we appreciate your time and, and look forward to speaking to you. So thanks for joining again, and thanks Stephen and Rob. You're welcome. Thanks Bye. everyone. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye-bye.